This video will discuss magnetic shielding in NMR. So we've shown in previous videos that our magnetic Hamiltonian is going to be equal to the negative magnetogyric ratio, gamma, times the Z component of our magnetic field, times the Z component of the angular momentum of our nucleus in question. Typically in this chapter, that's going to be a hydrogen one nucleus or a single proton. So the magnetogyric ratio is equal to the nuclear factor times the nuclear magneton. The nuclear factor is a single integer for a given nucleus. The nuclear magneton is equal to the charge of a nucleus divided by two times its mass. So all three things in here in this equation are constants. So our energy levels of having a spin up or spin down nucleus of a spin plus one half or minus one half gives us energies of minus plus one half h bar gamma times bz. So h bar is a constant, gamma is a constant. The only thing that depend that determines how far our energy levels are separated apart from each from one another for a given nucleus is what is the strength of the external magnetic field in that z direction. So the difference in energy between the two energy levels is equal to Planck's constant times the frequency of the photon that we absorbed to transition between these two levels, which is equal to h bar times gamma times bz. Okay, so now the extra caveat that's going to cause even uh, the same nuclei to undergo resonance at slightly different frequencies of photon is the fact that nearby electrons generate an electric field or generate a magnetic field and that magnetic field is going to oppose the original magnetic field which was the external magnetic field our, our nucleus is in. So the external magnetic field generated by our electrons is equal to negative sigma times the original magnetic field. So this value sigma is called the shielding constant and that's going to depend on the local environment around the particular nucleus how much it is shielded. Uh, more heavily shielded means higher electron density around it, means more electron density is going to oppose that magnetic field more strongly and push against it more. So the stronger our magnetic field gets, the stronger our electrons are going to oppose it with their own magnetic field. So typically, sigma is on the order of 10 to the minus fifth, so about 10 parts per million that our electrons will oppose a given magnetic field, or about, let's see, 0.001% of that magnetic field will change. So the shielding is gonna make a very slight change in the effective magnetic field that our nucleus feels, but that change is big enough to measure, and that is the basis of all of NMR, uh, measuring the different uh, resonance frequencies of all of our nuclei and our molecule, forming effectively a, a fingerprint for that given molecule. Okay, so our uh, magnetic field in the z direction now is going to be the original magnetic field we felt times one minus sigma. So now the magnetic field B naught is going to equal two pi times the frequency of the photon divided by the magnetogyric ratio times one minus sigma. The two pi here comes from the fact that we have an H here and an H bar over here. So uh, H equals two pi H bar. So that's where this two pi is gonna be coming from. All right, so if our shielding goes up, that means our Z component of our magnetic field is going to go down and the frequency at which we undergo resonance is going to go down as well. And as I mentioned, the sigma, the shielding constant, is going to depend on the local chemical environment. Higher local electron density is going to generate a bigger sigma and a more electron deficient environment will generate a smaller sigma. So there, as I said, more local electron density means sigma goes up. As I mentioned from the previous video, um, what's gonna form our reference signal in proton NMR, H1 NMR, is gonna be TMS, tetramethylsilane. So that's uh, silicone, uh, silicon atom with four methyl groups bonded to it. 
silicon is directly below, below carbon in the periodic table, so it likes to form four covalent bonds. So TMS has a very high sigma, and that's going to allow us to define the quantity chemical shift. So the chemical shift of a given proton, a given hydrogen nucleus, is equal to 10 to the sixth, or one million, times the frequency at which that nucleus undergoes resonance, minus the resonance frequency of TMS under the same conditions, divided by the frequency of our NMR spectrometer, as discussed in previous videos. Okay, and this multiplying by 10 to the sixth here makes it that the units here that we're talking about are parts per million, sometimes abbreviated PPM. And this uh, spectrometer frequency, that's typically going to be measured in hertz or megahertz, etc. So we're just making sure to use uh, whatever units we need to do, whatever units we need to use there to make everything cancel out. So using this definition, we can see that the the frequent the resonance frequency of TMS will equal itself when you're looking at the chemical shift of TMS. So the chemical shift of TMS is by definition going to be 0, 0.0 parts per million. So that's going to form a reference in our spectrum, and it's going to define the zero relative to which everything else is going to be defined. So because most, uh, because almost everything has a lower shielding constant than TMS, that means almost everything is going to have a higher frequency of resonance than TMS. So almost everything, almost every hydrogen nucleus you'll encounter will have a positive uh, chemical shift in some greater than zero number of parts per million for what we measure its chemical shift as.